All right, everyone, we got head coach Ben Olsen here for you. Ben, just to kick it off, uh, regular season's finally here uh, at home against Kansas City, who we played at the end of last season. How's the squad feeling? How are you feeling ahead of this game? Uh, we're, we're excited. And obviously, the home opener brings a certain level uh, of excitement. Uh, we, you know, the, the, the plan and the hope is to uh, – you know, take care of as many home games as possible to amass points so we can put ourselves in the postseason. And that, yeah, that was the goal last year. That's the same goal here. And it's, you know, it's postseason focused, but it's also um, uh, sending sending our fans home happy and, and, and trying to put it on an uh, entertaining uh, match for them to to come here and, and enjoy, a, enjoy a night at Shell Energy Stadium. All right, Dustin, go ahead. Hey, Ben. Hi, oh, Dustin. Hey, uh, obviously a short week. Um, does it help to play a team like Kansas City? Obviously they're very good at what they do, but, you know, you've played them so much, you're kind of familiar with them. Does it help um, preparing on a shorter week? Maybe a little bit. Uh, you know, we, we still have two full days to really dive deep into them. Um, and, you know, they, they could have made some tweaks in the preseason uh, but we we are familiar with them, and uh, but it's the same thing with the, on their side, right? So they're familiar with us. So I don't think there'll be too many secrets about what we'll, we're going to be doing and, and uh, uh, what they do as far as their overall game model and how they want to go about the game. Uh, but again, as I always say, it, uh, you can understand the team or know what they're going to do, but it doesn't make it easy. It's still making plays that matter, and uh, you know trying to stop. What is a, a very good team coming in here? Again, keep in mind this team was one of the best teams in the league in the second half, uh, if not the best team in the league in the second half of uh, uh, last year. And from what I read, they're healthy. Uh, and I'm sure they also remember us knocking them out last year. So they'll, they'll, they'll have a, a, a real probably combative energy, and they're tough to break down. Peter's a great coach. Uh, we'll, have our, we'll have our hands full. And then just um, obviously Sebas got injured in the game. Do you have an update on him? And then uh, Escobar and Bossy were unavailable. Um, any news regarding them coming into tomorrow? Well, I won't get into Escobar and Bossy, but Sebas uh, Ferreira pulled a hamstring that was uh, somewhat significant. So he'll be out for a while. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. All right, Joey, go ahead. Hey, Ben. Joe. So uh, Xavier Valdez is going to be in the bench goalkeeper on Tuesday. Is there any sort of injury to Tarbo to know about, or has Xavier made some big strides this offseason? Uh, Tarbo had a baby, and um, so that was the reason he's been out. So congratulations to uh, him and his lovely wife. You know that he'll be back. He'll, he's he's fine. No injuries, and we're looking forward to getting back him back. But uh, family first. So St. Louis seemed to identify the left-hand side of the defense a little bit of a weaker point as they consistently triggered a heavy press whenever Tate Schmidt or Mikhail were up in possession. What uh, adjustments can be made tactically or personnel-wise to improve building out of the back on that side? Wait, what, what, what was your assessment of the left side again? Uh, the St. Louis triggered a very heavy press whenever Schmidt or Mikhail were in possession. Well, you know. St. Louis just presses. They don't, you know, they're, they're, they don't even know if they, at times they don't even necessarily trigger. They just, they, they go and they, they keep pushing you, whether it's on the um, right or left side. You know, I think some of that, you know, if, if, um, if anything, our, our balance was, uh, I, I thought, at times a little off. We, we, we weren't, our, our spacing wasn't, perfect over the course of the night uh, and I think we at times we gave them too many numbers uh, and we brought it towards the sideline too early uh, so that you know is something we've uh, we've looked at and tried to fix both through you know positional positions uh, and uh, or, or putting guys in the right positions more often uh, so that uh, we can't get trapped down the side so, but St. Louis, you know, they don't, 
we're going to press you left, right. We just, again, brought, brought a lot of numbers there. So I think it was it seemed that they were uh, trapping down our left side. We also had some joy going down the left side too. Uh, so it's a little bit of a, a cat and mouse game over there. Thank you so much, Ben. Jorge, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Jorge. You, you talk about uh, the home opener and how important it is. I'm hearing that it's a near sellout. Um, hopefully it sells out by then. But how, is it important, how important is it for you and the team to know that the next four games you guys play will be at home? Well, I- yeah, it, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't love the idea of I, I love the idea of playing home, but I don't think we should start with four home, you know, a bunch of home games. Uh, but uh, as I said before, all right, we, we have to take care of our home games. They're, they're all critical. If we're going to get to where we want to um, go, and, and if we if we want to be in the postseason, we we have to take care of. Uh, get maximum points as much as possible at Shell Energy. It's no different than most teams in this league. Uh, and as, as I said before, it's important to put on the right show and, and uh, continue to please our fans and, and make sure that they go home happy. So that's the pri- that, that's the priority. That's the focus right now. This weekend's you know everything we're we're putting everything into this weekend, and that's our only focus. And then we'll just go go game to game from there. Uh, next week is uh, very busy. We'll have St. Louis coming on a short turnaround, and again, nobody's fit at this point in in the in the season. So we're going to have to start using everybody, uh, in particularly uh, in particular going into these next three games. Lastly, Coach, is there anything that you can share with us um, about Osmane Silla? Uh, just that he's done well in preseason and he's a, a draft pick that we like and, and, and we're glad he's a part of the, the group. You know, he's got some things going on with visas and uh, availability right now that we're working through and uh, that could get, you know, shored up today, tomorrow, next day. Uh, so that he's kind of day-to-day as far as availability. All right, Jesus, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Hi, Jesus. Hey, Coach. Uh, first time talking this season. Um, last season, Griffin Dorsey kind of broke through, you know, the second half of the season. And I'm wondering if, I know it's early in the season, but I am wondering if there's one player perhaps that you think could be that breakout player, much like Dorsey was last season. Well, I don't want to put any pressure on anybody to, to uh, I don't, I don't want to kind of single out anyone. Um, you know, I'll talk about the preseason to maybe get into your question. Some of the guys that haven't gotten a lot of minutes last year that, you know, I'm excited about them pushing into the lineup or at least creating some tension and some uh, some pressure on the starters to, you know, to push their game. And that, that's, you know, Kowalczyk, I think, had a good game the other night. And uh, with Bossy's ob- absence, uh, he's been kind of getting more minutes uh, in the preseason, um, Brooklyn is a you know he's again one of our own, so we want to continue to you know have him grow. And one of the best ways is to get him on the field. Uh, it, it, Hector's been out; it's no no secret there. So he's going to see more minutes. So we're looking for him to take some responsibility. Jan Gregush hopefully can um, uh, give us some of his best soccer. And if if that's the case. He's a real piece, and he's a guy that can help us <clears throat> in the center of the park. Uh, Ibrahim Aliou, you know, he had a, a up and down season and uh, did a lot of good, put himself in a lot of uh, good spots, but wasn't able to see the net as much as we would have liked. So hopefully he can grow and, and add to this team and be a real force and, and prove that he's a starter. So these are all guys that, you know, uh, we're looking for. Uh, 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 to take a big step. Ferrer is another one, right? You know, we've talked enough about him. We don't have to really dive into it for a little bit because he's got a significant hamstring injury. Um, But, you know, when he does come back, he's another guy that we're still looking to get the most out of and and, uh, for, you know, to see if he can be our our starting nine. Uh, Final question for me. You know, last season you guys kind of came on uh, and had more – 
how much is this season also having a bit of patience as you guys work with this roster? You know, you had some players leave, some players coming in, and then just as you mentioned, some players that didn't get as much playing time last year will get more. How much is patience has to be preached to the fans and to everybody else that hey, this is still a project that we're still working on? I, you know, I can I can spin that narrative. You know, and I appreciate the question, uh, but it's it's. You know, I, I think it's always hard to ask for patience uh, with fans. They're, they're just not in their nature, and, and you know that's kind of the beauty of it. They, their expectations uh, of us right now, and, and probably uh, the community of Houston, their expectations are of us right now are we should go win the MLS Cup because that's the only thing we didn't do last year. Uh, and, and so, are they realistic? I don't know. Those are people's expectations, and, and I, I can't do anything to change that. Uh, but internally, we have the similar goals. You know, we're, we're going about it in a similar way. We, we've talked about sustained success here, and that means, as we say, you, you, you know, say at nauseum, being in the postseason, putting ourselves in positions to win trophies. You know, can we do that year after year after year? And uh, that, to me, is success. And eventually, if you do that, you're going to hold a trophy. Uh, but it doesn't happen. Things don't always go your way each year. Um, things went our way last year, uh, and we found out kind of who we were. We built a foundation. I think we built a culture, uh, ha- have, have an identity of, you know, a, a broad identity of who we are and how we're going to go about winning games. So there was a lot to that. Um, but last year was last year. This is a whole new year, and I've done this enough where uh, it's just going to be a whole new journey. And we got to navigate it, and there's going to be a new process to how we get there. Uh, there's going to be a, a, a ups and downs, and they're going to come at different different moments. Right now, we got injuries, we got green cards. Uh, it's been a choppy preseason. That's okay. We missed out on a few players that we wanted to get in here, and we missed out on them for a whole bunch of different reasons. But that doesn't mean we're not going to get new players. That doesn't mean we're, we're not going to have some highs during this time. And all the meanwhile, we, can, uh, we have opportunity. We have opportunity, as I said, for these guys that uh, are going to be able to play over the next couple months uh, through because there's injuries. Uh, it's opportunity for our coaching staff to reinvent ourselves a little bit and, and get the most out of the team that we have. And uh, we think we can do that. We think we have enough players to get results in this league. Um, uh, in the early part of the season. So that's a long-winded answer, I know, uh, Jesus, but <laughs> hopefully I answered everybody else's questions in that one, especially Maggie's. Thank you, Coach. All right, Maggie, go ahead. Oh, well, hello there. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, I know you guys had a little bit of a break, but you guys are still doing really well. Yeah. Um, what are you guys thinking about the future of the team? Oh, I'm way taller than him. Okay, all right. All right. It, it, by three to six inches. Okay, all right. yeah. Listen, it was far away. It was far away. We could yeah. get close. Must have been really far. I'm, yeah, I tower over him. <laughs> okay, you just mentioned, you know, down players not having a, a lot of your core, and this is a club that is so focused on fit and making sure that everybody gets along. What is morale like, and how is that, how is that keeping that up with all these obstacles? Uh, for you as a leader in, in, in the dressing room, it's okay. You know, we have, we still have a uh, a, a good core, and, and and you know, just because guys are out, or um, they're they're still there. You know, that culture is still there, and there's still a, a, a huge belief in that locker room that uh, we understand who we are, and, and that we can be successful uh, with with guys out, or um, and with with the group we have. I, I think there's a, a real belief. Um, but it's, you know, we, uh, season really hasn't started yet. So we'll see, this is going to be a week to week pro- uh, process and, and results matter, you know, wins, wins help that and losses, uh, can, you know, derail some things. So that, that's, we're going to, we're going to go through resi- um, adversity this year and, and we're going to need to be resilient and we're gonna have to rely on some of our veterans that have been around this league, whether it's Steve and Artur and, and Hector, uh, Brad Smith, a lot of these guys have been through uh, this so many times. So uh, it's not just me. It's just I always say it's just not it's not my culture. It's it's our culture, and it, uh, in some ways, it's really their culture that because uh, they are the uh, the the most important ones because they enforce it. Uh, they they 
bring their their own energies and, and beliefs to the to the uh, locker room every day. So I'm, I'm uh, I overall I'm, I'm been pleased with the the mentality and the culture as even though it's been a, a choppy preseason. Um, you mentioned Steve. You mentioned Brad Smith. Steve, an incredible first game, mm. proving age is kind of just a number. I mean, he's 37 years old and making crazy saves like that. Um, Brad is getting his fitness back, you know, 70 minutes. And, you know, he came on very early with after uh, Sabo's injury. But, you know, what do you, what do you say about those two players? How, how impressed are you with them in the preseason? And what are you looking forward to watching them? Well, they're they're different play. They're different human beings for sure. Uh, but they're they're both really important for for our group. Uh, uh, Steve is you know again uh, uh, a real leader for this team. He's got a great pulse. He's been through this so many uh, so many times uh, in each every season. So different that he's experienced. He's got a great memory for him, and he understands uh, the. The, the the mentality of the players and what we need and it, always speaking up and you know very very rarely does he say something and guys aren't like yeah no he's he's got a really good perspective on on where we're at and what we need to do and he's a very optimistic uh, person and he's got great energy and he's, he's I think he understands and he values each year at this point as he gets older. Uh, so um, he's huge, and he was huge the other night. He uh, makes some saves, but he also helps us uh, when the ball's on the ground and his his feet and the way he connects the game for us. Uh, he's a big piece in so many ways for us team. Brad, we're looking forward to getting him fully back. Uh, an ACL takes forever, and he came back and did had some good spot minutes for us last year. This year, you know, he's looking he's looking to be a starter. I mean, he wants to show us that. He should be on the field every weekend, and uh, you know he is an opportunity to do that. You know, he's gonna, he's a versatile guy. We can play him in a, a, a few different spots, whether it's out on the wing or he can play in the back, as he has most of his career. So, um, but uh, a, another great culture piece, a guy that's been around. He's also been in some other, you know, in England and uh, played or, or around the world. So he brings a, 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 a different look as well, but you know it's he, he's a neat guy. We got we got we got a good crew here. Well, y'all do have actually a good crew there. Um, last question: Have you seen any other angle of that LEU goal? Uh, the one that was on sides that was called yeah, off sides. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's why I called it a goal. That goal. yeah that. Uh, there was a few things that led up to that, that even leading up to um, – uh, this is a wrong call. It happens. It happens. Uh, it, it's tough to swallow because um, because it would have been nice to have a goal away, and it's not easy to get them. So it's, but it's what it is. Uh, they certainly didn't, didn't, uh, didn't get that one right. Uh, and it's frustrating, especially when VAR's there and they can replay it over and over. And it took so long. And usually if it takes that long, it's that close and they shouldn't call it. But whatever. It's, you know, uh, fortunately for for me, I, I can't dwell on it. I can I put that to bed and all the focus has been for the last few days is preparing for uh, um, a difficult, you know, group coming in here in Kansas City.